and then, and then not long ago, I made a major mistake. I flew into Pittsburgh and rented a car. I grew up in Eureka, Alabama. I learned how to drive in Eureka, Alabama. We do not have a traffic light in Eureka, Alabama, because we ain't got no traffic. <laughs> we put in a four-way stop, and it wouldn't work. Everybody in Eureka is so nice, nobody go first. <laughs> you go ahead. Down in Pittsburgh, everybody wants to go first. I have no business driving a rental car on the expressway through Pittsburgh. You got to understand Eureka is a little place where kids grow up and the smart ones move off and get a job. And the dumb ones stay home. And they marry the other dumb ones. And then they have more dumb ones. And I am fifth generation Eureka, Alabama. I have no business driving a rental car through Pittsburgh. But here I am on the expressway. I get in one of them lanes that dumps you off downtown, light green. I swung a left-hand turn right up a one-way street. Going the wrong way. We don't have a one-way street in Eureka, Alabama. If we did, we'd all get out of town. We couldn't get back, you know. <laughs> well, this Pittsburgh policeman saw me. He did a U-turn, hit that light, that siren, whoop, 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 came roaring up on my rear. I pulled over to the curb. Just as I pulled over, I realized I didn't have my seatbelt fastened. So I buckled that up right quick. He got out, came up alongside the car. He said, I guess you're wondering why I stopped you. I said, no, sir, I know. I'm the only one in Pennsylvania you can catch. <laughs> he said, you're from Alabama, aren't you? I said, why would you think that? He said, you sound just like Forrest Gump. <laughs> I don't know why. We get them all down in Alabama. Do y'all remember Gomer Powell? Did you know Gomer's from Alabama? Sylacauga, Alabama. Goober Lindsay, remember Goober? Goober from Jasper, Alabama. Forrest Gump, Greenbow, Alabama. Gomer, Goober, and Gump. <laughs> we did a study. We moved the state line 50 miles east, 100 miles north, we pick up Gore and Ginrich. <laughs> You think about that, Gomer, Goober, Gump, Gore, and Ginrich. Don't that sound like a redneck law firm to you? <laughs> then this policeman said, I see you got your seatbelt fastened. I said, yes, sir, I always wear my seatbelt. He said, you always hook it through your steering wheel like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, my topic tonight is hitching up a winning team. That's one of the reasons we're here to celebrate the teamwork, the spirit of teamwork that makes the Chamber of Commerce, Meadville, West Crawford County work, working together. My wife, Judy Babe, and I work together a good bit. She's a school teacher for many years. She taught at the school for the deaf, where, among other things, she taught sign language. Sometimes she get mad at me, go two or three days, won't say a word, just sign. <laughs> I let it go in one eye and out the other. <laughs> Have thought about signing back to her, but I don't know but one sign. <laughs> That's not the sign I'm talking about. I'm talking about this sign, no money. Judy Babe said, let's buy this. I said, no money. She said, let's buy that. I said, no money. Sometimes I give her that no money sign. She flipped me the one y'all thinking about. <laughs> Now, we have three kids. How many of y'all got kids? Let me see a show of hands. How many of you got kids that's grown and gone? Have any of y'all got kids that's grown, gone, now they done come back home? <laughs> I believe if me and Judy Babe are going to have an empty nest, we're going to have to burn them out. <laughs> <laughs> Our oldest one finished high school. He went off to college for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Came home one day, he said, Dad, I quit school. I said, son, what you gonna do? He said, I'm thinking about joining the Army. What do you think? I got to thinking about that. You do not have to pay tuition to the Army. <laughs> I said, son, talk to the recruiter, see if you can't get involved in some sort of training, be an advantage to you later in life in a vocation, avocation. Came in the next day, he said, Dad, I signed up for light infantry, rapid deployment. I said, son, that's real good. There's a heavy demand in the American job market for people who know how to rope down out of helicopters, eat snakes, shoot machine guns, you know. I said, you get out of the Army, you'll be able to get on with the Mafia. 
Well, they ship him 1,100 miles straight north, Fort Drum, New York. That is so far away from home, he couldn't come home on the weekend. We missed the kid. And he called home, he told his mother, he said, Mom, I'm not going to get to be home on Christmas Day because we're going to be on duty through the 26th of December. I'll be home on the 27th. Judah Babe said, that's all right, we'll just keep the tree up till the 27th. I'll bake the turkey on the 27th. Then he called home Christmas Eve. Dad, there's a rumor going around post. They say we could be deployed. I hope there's nothing to it. Don't say anything to Mom. I don't want her to be upset. But I thought I'd better let you know just in case. Then he called back Christmas Day. Dad, they got us up before daylight. They lined us up. They gave us shots 2 o'clock this afternoon. We are wheels up. The 10th Mountain Light Infantry is going to Cuba to put down a riot in a refugee camp. I don't know when we'll be home. Judah Babe and I sat around and cried all day Christmas Day. Didn't want to know when we'd hear from our son. We never had one of ours away from home Christmas time. Finally, after two weeks, the telephone rang. The operator said, I have a collect call. I knew it was the boy. <laughs> <laughs> I said, put him on the phone. Son, how you doing? He said, Dad, I'm fine. How's Mom? I said, Mom, Mom's fine. He said, tell Mom we'll be home in April. Judah Babe said, that's all right. We'll just keep the tree up to April. <laughs> keep the tree up to April. After the first of the year, you have to start dusting it, you know? <laughs> but he finally got home in April. We celebrated for just a few days. He left going back to Fort Drum. On the way out the door, he said, Dad, I'll be home this summer in August for two weeks. We get 15 days, block leave. Maybe we'll do some fishing. Judah Babe said, let's wait and take our vacation when Jim gets home. <laughs> then he called in August. Dad, I guess you heard about the hurricane. Andrew, all leaves have been canceled. We're packing up and moving out. 10th Mountain Light Infantry is going to Florida to help clean up. But tell Mom, the first sergeant said this year, we'll get to be home on Christmas Day. Thanksgiving Day, Judah Babe said, let's put the tree up. I said, honey, we just took it down. <laughs> but we put it up on Sunday afternoon after Thanksgiving. And Tuesday night he called. And he said, Dad, things have changed. I'm on the deployment list. Looks like this year I get to spend Christmas in Somalia. I said, Son, I know you must be disappointed. He said, Dad, I am disappointed. But I'm learning in the Army. You don't gripe about the pitching. You just hit what comes across the plate. Oh, my friend, out of the mouths of babes, life is an adventure. You and I wake up to a brand new world every day. Some days we wake up to exciting new opportunities. Some days we wake up to difficult new challenges. But things work out best for those who make the best of the way things work out. And odds are, those are the ones who love the game. If you want to have a winning team, you've got to surround yourself with people who love the game because you can't have a winning team until you have a team of winners. And winners have enthusiasm for what they do. My uncle John L. runs a little pecker wood sawmill. He says enthusiasm is the flywheel that'll get your saw through the knots in the log. It comes from being excited about what you do.